You are listening to The Free Amigos. Hey, I'm Casper. I'm Mark. And I'm Tony. Welcome, everybody, to pod number four of season number two of The Free Amigos podcast. And, um, yeah, excited about this one today. We've got uh, Frederick Kiyombia over in um, Uganda. And uh, before I go over to, to Frederick, well, I'll introduce the other of the Free Amigos. We've got Casper over there in Indonesia. You are well, Cas? You all all right? Hey, guys. Yeah, as always, doing great. Uh, it's quite, a, quite an interesting times here is uh, that we actually got into rain season now. So not the tropical stories for me this time. It's just <laughs> been raining and pouring down for days on end now. But it's actually quite nice because, I, yeah, we talked about that before. I got a bit of in the Groundhog Day feeling. To see the seasons change now, it's, um, it's a new start and new new point in life. So it feels really good here. Yeah. Um, but still doing great here, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the weather we have in the UK all the time. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just gets a bit colder sometimes. But... Um, Tony over there in Birmingham. Is it raining there? Actually, no, Mark, for once. It's a really beautiful autumnal day here. It's sun shining. It's actually really nice. I've been out for a walk this morning, got some fresh air. It's, it's been it's nice. I like it when the, when the, the autumn season's like this. It's a bit of a chill in the air, but it's just a bit of sunshine on your back. It's nice, but yeah, no, it's good. Okay, we haven't been so lucky here in Berkshire, but maybe we've got oh. that coming our way. But Sam. Um, let me let me go to to, uh, to Frederick there uh, in Uganda, and um, do you want to check? Uh, Fred, have you always um, lived in U- in Uganda? Because I know, sort of listening to your to your accent, you wouldn't necessarily sound like someone who's who's grown up in Uganda. But um, how's it over there today? Well, hi um, everyone. Um, it's actually a beautiful day. It's uh, bright blue, clear skies, um, really sunny. Um, so it's also been raining here a lot as well. Um, yeah, today is a really great, clear day. And I actually have um, grown up in Uganda, but okay. I, I mostly went to um, uh, international schools. So I was you know, exposed to like different groups of people. So, oh, okay. And then I moved to South Africa when I was 19, oh. um, for university. So, you know, that's kind of where the, I guess the accent kind of comes from. It's like a cocktail of things. Mm. Yeah. Well, how's it been this whole, um, this year, this lockdown period with you? Because we've discussed it a lot. And, you know, we've been in and out of lockdown and, you know, there's been various dramas uh, in Europe and and Cass has done it. It's been very different for him over in Indonesia. But how's it been there in in Africa, in Uganda? Um, Well, I mean, it's it's been crazy, but like, you know, a different kind of craziness. we're very lucky and blessed that we don't have that many um, COVID cases, um, you know, at least according to, you know, the figures that have been released. And so, you know, we're lucky on that front, but, you know, the lockdown came and it was not an easy time because um, the, the government had, had, had banned cars. So we had to walk and cycle everywhere for, you know, a period of like two weeks. And yeah, it was just like a lot of craziness and just very dramatic shifts, but mm. we've been hanging in there. <laughs> they, they've banned cars. Yeah, there was, um, at the very beginning um, in March, there was um, a ban on cars. So you how, had how to- people, have, How did people go to work? They didn't. Everything just <laughs> had to close. Schools, you know, everything just closed. Um, so if you had to go somewhere, you had to get um, special permission to use your car, um, so you just had to walk and cycle. Yeah, it was, it was it was a crazy, crazy time. That's back to the old days. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a yeah. Lock, that's a lockdown level too compared to all yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, it's, it's 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 bizarre how this whole situation. I don't we've had anything like this where it's affected the whole planet in such a huge way. It was really mm. something. You know, we talked about it on the podcast a few times. A real there's a real shift going on, and it's having we're in the middle of it still. I think, but. Um, yeah, I just want to touch on the the subject uh, for today, which I probably should have mentioned at the start, but there we go. <laughs> I really <laughs> want to talk a lot about um, creativity. Now, I know this is something you've written a book on recently, and um, Frederick's written, I think, 11 books now, and set up his own publishing 
company as well, you know, serial entrepreneur, written a lot of books, and they tie in very well with what we talk about, you know, self-development and empowerment, uh, entrepreneurship, and in particular, your most recent book, How to Make Money Using Your Creativity, which I think is something that's, that I'm really keen to sort of dive into more. I know Cass, obviously Cass is, a, is an author as well, so I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about on that front. But mm. um, just to go going back a bit then, um, where did your sort of journey into entrepreneurship start? Was it something that, that you've been doing your whole working life or did you have a period of employment which didn't work out for you and then you decided to to become an entrepreneur? Well, um, it's been a very interesting journey for me. Um, I did have a brief period of employment. So when I moved back from um, South Africa, I had two internships and the second one wasn't really satisfactory. So, you know, I just didn't see it going anywhere. Um, so I just decided, you know, rather than wasting time, you know, being in this position where like n nothing's really going anywhere and, you know, <laughs> it's just nothing's moving. So that's when I decided to, you know, make the jump into entrepreneurship because my original plan had been to um, work for a few years, save some money, and then do what I'm doing now. But my initial struggles really just made me like take a long, hard look at myself and really just mm -hmm. decide to take a chance on myself. Yeah, similar to our stories, really. With uh, it's all about that time when you kind of wake up for whatever reason and think, start thinking about the future, isn't it? You know, what do I want to do? I really want to spend my whole life working with somebody else? Do, have I got more to offer the world? It's interesting how it kind of happens for different people at different stages. Some people are forced into it or some people it's kind of inspired by it. But um, is it something that you think you, you developed as you as you grew up or something you were you were born with? Well, I think I think it's something I discovered as I grew up um, when I was young. I didn't really see myself as somebody who could you know be a business owner and you know, doing what I'm doing now. Um, I was very, you know, shy as a kid, so I just didn't really see it for myself. Um, but, you know, as I grew up and as I um, had, you know, career challenges, I really kind of discovered, you know, my own creativity and that really helped me um, do things in a way that was different. So in a way that suited me, in a way that I didn't have to be like everyone else. You know, I could do things in my own way and make things work for me. For me. Yeah, that creativity is, is so important as an entrepreneur, isn't it? Um, if my own, my own story, it was, I've always been quite a creative person as a designer, but I found um, through kind of a couple of decades working in more of a corporate environment, that I, it kind of, I kind of lost it over time, you know, just kind of, because um, it wasn't so much needed and you know, when I did come into more creative um, roles as I am now, or, you know, starting my own business, suddenly that creativity was kind of sparked again because I had just had this inspiration, you know, and I was, I was passionate about what I was doing. Um, but what then, you know, just go back to your, your latest book there, is there different types of, of creativity, would you say, that you can develop? Um, actually, uh, how to make money using your creativity is, is a course. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's a little mini course um, on Thinkific. And it's actually based on a book that I wrote last year called How to Be a Creative Thinker. Mm. And yes, I, I do think that there are different kinds of creativity. I actually break down in, I, I break them down into two major um, kinds of creativity. So this innovation is the first kind. So innovation, big ideas, crazy ideas. I'm a big fan of crazy ideas, by the way. Um, so one, of, one example I'd give of a crazy idea would be Zoom. Um, <laughs> there's a point in time where Zoom didn't exist, um, where it would be very hard for us to communicate on, on, in, in all these different locations you know, around the world. So you have Indonesia, you have Birmingham, you have, um, I didn't get your location, Mark. London. Not far from Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, you could say London. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have all these different locations, so we're able to communicate being where we are, and we don't have to travel to one 
location. So that would be my crazy idea. And then there's problem solving creativity where you're applying your creative thinking to a direct problem or concern. So for example, um, you know, like your friend said, uh, he was trying to get the airport in Indonesia and he, you know, had to take the, the train. We had to like hang off the side. Yeah. You know, for most people that would be like really scared. <laughs> he was just like, you know, I have to get to where I have to get to. This is how I'm going to solve this problem. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and that's basically what um, what an entrepreneur is. They're, they're just uh, an effective problem solver, aren't they? You, you have hurdles, you have challenges, but as an, part of being an entrepreneur is, is, is overcoming them and solving them and, and thinking of creative ways around them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like that because the innovating thing is kind of like you've got an idea uh, or a concept or an idea and, and you put it on the horizon um, and to get there, you need to do the problem solving. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Definitely, definitely. What was the name of the, the book you said about the, 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 the year before? How to be a creative thinker. Do you think that everyone can be a creative thinker? Definitely. Um, I think we all have... I think we all have the capacity to think creatively. I think we apply creativity in different ways. Um, so some people, you know, if you're good with computers, you would apply your creativity towards like making a, a computer program or like an app or something. If you're good with food, you can come up with like, you know, a really brilliant new recipe and a really, you know, brilliant new restaurant or something. So I think we all have the capacity to think creatively. I think we just apply it in different ways. And what would be your definition of creativity? Well, um, <laughs> yeah, we're jumping straight in. <laughs> yeah, uh, my definition of creativity, my definition of creativity would be this. I think creativity is just imagine letting your imagination um, just run wild, I think. You know, that's this kind of kind of my main definition. Letting your imagination just kind of just be untamed and just embracing all the crazy ideas that you have and just going with it. Yeah, there's a, there's something that happens though, isn't there? Where I think you know, talking about if we go a bit deeper into this, which I usually do, um, the different levels of consciousness. You know, where there is that level of consciousness, which is you could say pure creativity and you know these kind of crazy ideas, but then something comes in, the mind comes in and sort of like says that would never work, or you know that's a, that's a stupid idea, or whatever it is, you know, would kind of conflict that that energy in some way, and so it's almost kind of by, bypassing the mind, isn't it, so that you don't, so that it doesn't kind of filter through this. This, this more kind of innate creativity that we've all got. But I think because we're, we're all kind of so so in our heads a lot of the time, I think that can kind of almost mask that that, that innate creativity that, that we've all got access to. Yeah, I would disagree. Like, I don't know if you've got kids or not, Frederick, but uh, myself and Mark have got young daughters and you can see, you can, you can literally give a child a blank piece of paper and some crayons and saying, knock yourself out mm. be creative and I've not seen a child yet in my lifetime not be able to just come and use their imagination and put something down on paper mm. that's original to them so I think I agree it's an A in all of this it's just I think as we get older we get things we get we, we have different levels of consciousness like Mark's saying but we also then develop limiting beliefs and things that we, yeah. say, we say to ourselves oh, I can't do this I can't do that like that Mark and Casper are more of the creative types and, and are more of an, 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 a traditional artistry sense of the word. I'm more of a technical, probably more creative in a technical sense. And it's interesting to say that about computers because I'm from an IT background. I've never thought of myself as being creative per se, but perhaps I am. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a decent problem solver. I'm from a technical aspect, but I think we've all got it in ourselves. It's just sometimes we, we might shut it away as we get older and as life gets amongst us. Mm. And that's how I got to that question, what do you, how do you define creativity? Because I just realized, and I never realized that in my life, is that the, it's in the word, create. It's basically just making something that's not there yet. And, and, and whether that's, like, we always think that creativity must be like, you must be an artist, or, you, or, or in, in whatever way, like a painter or, or a musician. 
But if you, it doesn't matter what you create. Mm. That's the beauty of creativity. I mean, the same thing when you when you on the topic of raising children, for instance, you you get a problem in in front of you, and you need to figure out how to fix it. You need to create a new situation. That's creativity, then, right? Yeah, I've never thought of it like that, but yeah, I think you. you no, me right. neither. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> You're already, great insight. What do you think about that, Patrick? How do you see that? Um, well, I. I I I see where everyone's coming from. Um, what I would say is, I think that you know, as as we get old, well, I'm you know a bit younger, so I think you know, in my generation, um, certain things might not be as cool, and I think we're a little bit, um, I wouldn't say obsessed, but I think we're a bit too concerned with being cool, and I think that can be also be very limiting and that you know um okay you know like with social media and with everything and you know the ferraris and the private jets and the birkin handbags and all of that um that's all great you know if you have those things you know that's wonderful but um doing like the real work of creating and you know and working is not as glamorous as um social media would have you believe yeah. so i think that people are afraid to, might be afraid to be, you know, creative because it might not be as cool or might not look as glamorous. Yeah, I fully agree on that. And that's actually what I was thinking about as well, is that you can only create something if it's not there yet, right? So you need to get away from the standards to yeah. create something. If it's already there, uh, and yeah. that's the whole thing that we talked about. What you say, you say now is like, yes, you got you can have this jet set lifestyle because everyone is doing it and it's cool. But you're not creating anything; you're just copying what other people are doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And that's why, you know, crazy ideas. And you know, I say this using air quotes. There was a point in history where the person who decided to, you know, um, create the cell phone. Yeah. It was like, I have this great idea, this, you know, handheld device that allows you to, you know, to speak to people um, that are not with you physically. And, you know, people probably looked at them like, oh, my God, you're out of your mind. Like, <laughs> do, you know, so, do you know the actual story behind it? Because it's an I amazing think, story. You know the actual story? I think it was Motorola in New York. And I actually don't. Oh, look it up. Look it up for everyone. Because yeah. it's amazing. So what he said is the CEO of Motorola, I think it was CEO. Mm. He just literally said, what we're gonna do is in six months from now, I'm gonna have a uh, wireless conversation with the boss of another company. And he invited the uh, a, a, a journalist from the New York Times. And he was literally in a, on the street uh, in, in, in New York with the New York Times reporter next to him, and he called his his uh, opponent. And he says, I'm calling you wireless, we won. Oh, wow. So he just said to his team, this is what we're gonna do. I don't care how, but that's what we're gonna do. And everyone was like, it's not possible. He said, no, we make it possible. So it's an amazing story, look it up. It's, it's, it's a great example that you give there, I love that, yeah. Yeah, I will definitely look it up after this call. Like the mobile phone, someone comes up with the idea, and then just makes it happen, right? For most people, like they can't really see it, you know, in like their in their vision. And so oh, that's why I said, you know, being creative is not necessarily as cool as you know we might envision it to be. I love that because in the end, it is cool, but it takes a certain kind of leadership function and a sort of certain kind of like. I don't care what you're all doing, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and then if you succeed, you're a hero. That's it. And when you think about it, everything around us that we see was an idea at some point. You know, everything was in was in someone's imagination and they managed to manifest yeah, it, it in, in It takes a lot reality. of courage actually, um, I think, to create. Yeah. That's a great one. So creativity is also courage. It's having the idea is one. And I always, always said that like, yes. like having an idea is, 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 is yeah, really good, but it's worthless. Doing it, that's that's golden. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I think you, you, I don't think you can have creativity. You know, I definitely experienced this in my you know, early, when I was just starting out. Um, a lot of people didn't really understand what I was doing, yeah. um, you know, because it was a bit different from the norm. So, you know, I find myself having to really kind of stick to my guns and say, you know, this is, this is what this is. And this is the direction that I'm taking. Mm. Right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. There's this this picture I shared the other day uh, on, on on social media as well. It's it's, it's uh, what was it again? Um, you can't do it wrong if nobody knows what you're doing. <laughs> Definitely. And I love that so much. Everyone just goes like, and it's it, it, the picture is a is a, is a guy um, has a chair upside down and he's sitting on the chair upside down. And and if you know, is it wrong? That's not how you sit on a chair. Well, I'm not sitting on a chair. <laughs> so you don't know what I'm doing. You can't do it wrong if nobody knows what you're doing. And I think that that's actually, a, a lot of people say, hey, that's wrong because it's something new. They haven't seen it yet. But that's how creativity goes. And that's how you invent new stuff. Yeah, I like that, yeah. And that what you said as well is that you said, I'm gonna stick with this plan. Whatever you say, whatever everyone else is saying, I've got a vision or an idea, and I'm just going to stick with it, and you'll see it when it's finished. Yeah, that's that's um, that's such an important thing to have. Um, I think, in my personal belief, um, because if you're doing something new, you're going to get a lot of resistance, um, and you know, a lot of people are not going to really understand, you know, what you, what it is that you're doing. But you really have to dig deep and just say, okay, this is. This is what I'm doing. I'm gonna, you know, make it happen. So there's the word trust, trusting yeah. yourself as well, right? That. Yes, that's the key word there. Trust, and and so, but the opposite of trust, of course, is like the fear of failure. Mm. How how, yeah. how how do you deal with that? I've learned to not view failure as such a bad thing. Um, I. I think that failure, I, well, I think failure just teaches you some really great lessons. Um, I think some of my, you know, best moments have come after, like, really after a moment of failure. Mm. I've had, like, a moment of, like, success. So I don't fear failure anymore. Um, I think if something, you know, doesn't work, it's fine. Um, we just, you know, have to move on and keep moving forward. Mm. You, you take the lessons out of that though, it teaches you something every time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You have to have that attitude, don't you? Because it's it's going to happen multiple times as an entrepreneur. I, think I saw a post by Gary Vee the other day, he says, you know, being an entrepreneur is like being kicked in the face consistently. <laughs> it's just, it's, <laughs> if, you, if you're not up for that, then, then don't be an entrepreneur, you know, stay in a job. Because it's not, it's it's the hard path, but it's the most rewarding path ultimately. But I think for a lot of people, it's it's the fear around money or financial fear that holds them back. You know, we talked about this on the pod before. If you follow that fear through, oh, what if, you know, this this fails and, you know, I lose the house. Oh, well, what happens then? Well, what if I lose the house? I move in with so-and-so. You know, you can follow that fear through, but I think it's often trying to protect a certain standard of lifestyle often that holds people back and, and so they never really take that jump even if they might have a passion an idea for something they want to create they wouldn't they wouldn't be prepared to take that jump because they're, they're too afraid of losing you know this lifestyle they've they created have. yeah yeah i'm I, I fully understand that um i think you know that's that's a very valid concern um you know especially if you have children, uh, you know, um, or if you have a partner, I think that makes it all the m all the more scary. Mm. You know, if what if I do this thing and it doesn't work? Like, you know, what's going to happen to the relationship? What's going to happen to, um, you know, my kids? You know, school. You know, so I fully understand those fears. Um, and I think what I would say is because I I am a lot younger and because. So how old are um, you? Actually, I'm I'm 25. 25. Yes. Just for the listeners, so they know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We are all 60. For people that are listening, we're all... You know, Tony, Tony is, uh, Tony's closing up to 80 already, but yeah. Still got it. <laughs> no, we, we would say, like, uh, the community we're part of now, we hear of somebody who's, like, in their 20s or starting this journey now is quite envious, you know, us, us coming across it sort of uh, in our 30s, going up, coming up to 40, and then... You know, to think if you'd found this, there's nothing you can do about it now, of course, but finding this path in your 20s. But it's interesting that in that we've got into this with a bit of a framework and a community to support us. Um, you know, we won't go into into exactly, you know, the community we're part of, but yeah, it's really uh, amazing to to go out and just, just, just do this on your own, you know, which you're doing. Have you found, is, is there a community that you sort of lean on or is it kind of friends or relatives that, that help you when if things get tough or you literally just out there on your own and you just kind of you know you're able to deal with this kind of stuff yourself um well i would say that um well i have, I have two answers um to that question um my parents and my family have been a really great support system um both my parents are entrepreneurs um so i've really been able to learn sort of the even though we, we all do different things, I've really been able to learn some of the core um, value, uh, core traits that, you know, make someone a success. So resilience, resourcefulness, um, strategy, you know, those, and creative thinking, you know, those are four, I think, core traits that make a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so that's that, and then, in terms of my peers, you know, I've had to find my own support network, um, you know, on social media. And before the COVID, I was in um, like a group of entrepreneurs and we used to meet like every two weeks and we used to discuss our problems and stuff like that. So that was very helpful. Um, I definitely recommend for anyone um, you know, who's in this journey, like, you know, you need, you do need to find a support network mm. because it, it does get tough and, you know, it does certainly get a bit lonely sometimes. Mm. So yeah. having people we can bounce ideas off of, or, you know, just someone you can talk to who understands your specific, um, set of problems is, is very important. Mm. And, so, and yeah. it helps to mastermind as well, doesn't it? Bounce ideas off and not necessarily always you've got issues or problems in your business or but also just to develop ideas mastermind you know, how one another that's definitely been a bonus of let's say us three here that we have that support network and uh and reinvigorated our circle of influence mm -hmm. you're familiar with that term and having those people at the, the points of those people around you and mentors as well it sounds like yeah. your parents are your, are your mentors but um I certainly didn't have anyone I could look to as an entrepreneur to, to, to sort of ask questions to until I, you know, until I started on this path. But I think that's, a, I've realized how important that is to always be, you know, it's not just about you come out of education and you, and you stop learning. You know, you, you should always, some of the guys that, that we learn from now, they've all got, they've all got mentors. You know, you should always have a mentor. You should always be learning from someone, you know, which I think yeah. is key. It's so easy to get just kind of stuck and think you know it all. <laughs> that's the end really, isn't it? You're not going to progress from there. Yeah, that's that's definitely um, def I, I definitely uh, agree with that. And um, what I would say is, you know, um, if you don't have a mentor, you know, figure in your life. I think there are there are many great mentorship programs, you know, on the internet. So um, there are ways. Th there are more resources. I think now uh, more than ever, we can you know, find a mentor or. If you're trying to figure something out, you can do the research and figure out how to make something happen. So I think the internet has been a very big blessing in that way. Um, well, I, I certainly wouldn't be at this stage in my life without the internet. So because it it's has allowed me to, yeah, it's changed the game. It has allowed me to um, get solutions for myself, um, research um, what I need to research. It also has given me access to people that I maybe wouldn't wouldn't have access to. So yeah, yeah. Level the playing field for everyone. Else. Yes. Yeah. 
question I have here, right? Is, is you, you write your books about uh, creativity, how to create creative mindsets, all those kind of things. Um, mm. Why do you want people to be creative? Is, do you have like a uh, an incentive behind it? Well, <laughs> well, um, yes, it's all part of a master plan. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, um, my my creativity has helped me, you know, in my own life, and I started this, you know, with very limited resources. And you know, I was able to make you know some things happen for myself. So I think that if I can do that for myself, then there are lots of people with you know a lot of great potential to do some really amazing things for themselves. And they may not know that or realize that yet, or maybe they're a bit too scared. So I really just want to be that person to be like, you know what, you can actually it is actually possible for you, and you can actually do this. Um, a bit like the, yeah, so like, like the, if I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. Uh, y- yeah, um, in, in kind of like a, I guess, you know, a very basic sense, yeah. It reminds me really of the uh, the boy who harvested the wind. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that story. Yeah, I think he was, um, he did the, the windmill. Yeah, was it, was it Malawi? That was, uh, it was not Malawi, but I can't remember which country it was in. But it's it, it was that uh, just a kid, the kid. Yeah, I think it's even like the, the kid who who uh, harvested the wind, who just went to the library and just got so many books and taught himself how to build a windmill so they could have a pump uh, from a well to get water, and that's how he changed the whole village. Yeah. And it's just this one one what well, child getting the information because he had this dream. I really like that. That's a great, great inspirational story. Of like, and, and in the end, he wrote a book about that because he said, like, if I can do it, everyone can do it, mm. and yeah. you can change a whole continent in the end. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I was just thinking there about um, you know specific tips for anybody who's kind of listening to this now and, and wanting to encourage their own creativity. Um, you know, I kind of uh, something I've been working on a lot is is on the meditation side. I think I think that's key, really, to give your mind a break and access that um, uh, more intuitive level of, of consciousness. That's something, that's something that's helped me. And also, I saw something, uh, Jim Quick put something up the other day about uh, remembering your dreams. I thought it was really interesting. Yep. Apparently, periodic table and um, Frankenstein, the story, came from people's dreams. And he says the first thing he does when he wakes up is to recall his dreams, because there could be all kinds of information in there to, to solve problems and um, uh, you know all kinds of creative ideas that just come up in that in that kind of um, last part of sleep. But is there anything in particular you found, uh, Frederick, that that is that and you could recommend to somebody who's, who really wants to spark their own creativity? Well, I would say, well, I have this thing. It's called um, I call it my idea notebook. So again, with the air quotes, and you know, in this notebook, I just kind of write down just like random notes, and I use I use this a lot in my problem solving. So when I'm, you know, trying to work something out, I just kind of write like notes and notes and notes. And that really helps me personally. So, you know, I would say that. And um, I also have like a specific specific playlist for different things. So when I'm working, I have a specific playlist. When I'm working out, I have another playlist. So I I find music also really helps. Cass, Cass said something interesting the other day when he writes, no filter, is it? You don't edit as you write, you just write. Yeah. And then you, the whole thing, and then you go back and edit afterwards. That's what I've started doing with a lot of my posts, because you interrupt the flow. If you suddenly start checking spelling and punctuation, you interrupt that that natural creative flow, don't you? Well, yeah. One thing that, and this is quite interesting, like uh, making the circle round here, as in uh, what I've learned from one of my mentors when I was quite young, uh, starting as a creative, is I was in a in a, in a boardroom with uh, the biggest TV channels uh, in, in Holland and actually a couple of European TV channels as well. And during the meeting, I suddenly had like an idea. I had an idea like, this is what we can do. Um, but I didn't say it. And so after that meeting, my, my mentor um, got me out and said, I, I could see on your face that you were just going like, this is <laughs> a brilliant <laughs> idea. Uh, but you didn't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you could see it on my face. He said, why didn't you say it? I said, well, I didn't want to give that idea to all those big TV channels and they will just run away with it, right? 
And and then he said, yeah, but now it's just in your head and it will never be made. Hmm. It will never be made. And if you just had said that, they might have just taken your idea and run away with it, but they will remember that you were the guy that came up with the plan. Right, and and then and he said this a, a really amazing thing, and I think this is this is the quite important thing about creativity. He said, and you will come up with a new idea tomorrow anyway. <laughs> Guess what? The next morning I woke up and I was like, that's a brilliant plan. I've got I've got a brilliant plan again. <laughs> and so it, it's it's like and that's the flow state of just getting it out. And and I think that the most important thing is that next to the fact of keeping that flow, just get it out, get it out, get it out, and we'll fix it later. Right, and we do the editing later, whether it's writing or making content or whatever you're doing. Just keep on going. I think that that that. Uh, oh, I lost what I wanted to say actually there. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> little anecdote there. <laughs> lost my own flow. It's, it's just getting that, but getting your thoughts out and getting it. I'm sort of yeah, like no, a no, dump, a, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no. The thing that I wanted to say there as well is, I think that the most important thing to creativity is that so many people think. That they're not creative. Yeah. Like what you I'm said, Tony. Old, I'm old my hand oh, 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 I'm not a creative. Yeah. But w- what we see now is that everyone is a creative. Mm-hmm. But it's just doing something different than what. Yeah, it's going to be a takeaway from this doing. podcast for me for soon. Yeah. Yeah. You are a creative if you do something different than the pack does, basically, right? Yes. And yeah. I think I think now more than ever that's really important. Like people need to start being creative because a lot of these traditional ways of, of living and working are, are being taken away. So many people, you know, yeah, their jobs are disappearing. And people are being going to be forced to get creative now. And I think hopefully this sees, sees the start of people moving as we are into that more that entrepreneurial space where it's yeah, it's essential to be creative if you're going to stand out. Well, COVID's brought that upon the whole world. People have had to mm. be creative with, with providing for their families themselves and their income. Then, then a question to Frederick again is that uh, what we talked about just before the podcast is that that um, so for instance here in Indonesia um, the resources are we we got less resources here so you must be more creative to find a solution. Do you think that um, that where you have been growing up um, has been helpful? for you to be creative because you were kind of forced to be creative, Fair? Um Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I think, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm very blessed, um, you know, to, um, you know, live, you know, have, you know have, having had an education and all that. But, yeah. um, you know, I do live in a part of the world where there is, you know, a lot of rampant poverty and you, you really have to be very very resourceful um i think you know especially in, in our part of the world um to make something happen because the resources are just not there so yeah. and you know um really it's just kind of it's up to you to, there's not as much help you know available so you have to it's upon you to just kind of take what you have and then you know make something work for yourself yeah so i, I definitely think that my environment played a big role in where I am now. It's nurtured your creativity. Yeah. Mm. But that's, mm. that's, that's, that's really interesting, yeah. Yeah, I remember Robert uh, Kiyosaki talked about the um, when he was learning from his, uh, what was it, his rich dad. Yeah. <laughs> and he said to him, Tony probably read this and knows about this, but he, he, he encouraged him to work for nothing yeah. growing up because he said, the moment I give you a paycheck, you know, you will just go to sleep basically your, your creativity will will, will just disappear supplier. exactly and yeah. i think that that happens a lot to people is this kind of i mean having having that monthly paycheck paycheck we should never we should never um forget how lucky we are to, to have that you know but in a sense i think a lot of people really just kind of fall asleep into these kind of into these into these roles where they, they don't really get paid a certain amount every month no matter how much work they put in no matter how much how much they are you know how creative they are they get that monthly paycheck and it's so easy to just kind of go into this kind of uh, a bit of a, a, a dull routine and, and never really push yourself so i think you know robert kiyosaki's case there it obviously that was a key lesson for him you know almost like work for free rather than take the paycheck because it, you will just you completely stunt your creativity. Hmm, yeah, love that. 
if you can afford to do it. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yeah, it makes a difference. If you're, if you're living at home, for example, with your parents and you're younger, it's a perfect time to give it a go. As, as, uh, as Frederick said earlier, once you're kind of in your 40s, you've got family and kids and stuff, it, it's more difficult, but it can be something that you do alongside your job as well, as, as, uh, as we're doing, you know, just building it slowly um, and not, not jumping headlong into it and then having to, you know, potentially... Um, there's all kinds of risks involved with that. I think. Well, I think. Um, what, what, what I would say to that, I think, is, I think, you know, like we, what, like we said earlier, um, you know, I do understand that, you know, it's very scary um, if you know you have a, a partner and children. You know, that's because you have more people um, depending on you, but. I also think that the narrative around entrepreneurship, I think we also do ourselves a disservice. I think that it's an, I don't think it has to be, you know, the whole like, oh, um, you know, I quit today and, you know, I'm just going to like take all my life savings and it's like going to this thing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there are many more options and avenues to do things, you know, like what you are doing. Um, so I think once people know that there are many more avenues and many more ways of making things happen, it becomes a bit less scary Mm -hmm. because, you know, if I walk up to someone and tell them, okay, you can, you can, you know, work on your ideas and what you want to do, but you have to quit your job today and, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. jump, you jump, jump into jump. things, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, like now, and, you know, they, they ask me, okay, when, how am I going to pay them off my, my mortgage and what about my kids? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so I think because for most people, that's like the only image that they have of entrepreneurship is just like, okay, you know, someone just quit and, you know, a year later they were making like a million dollars, mm-hmm. which that is the exception to the rule. It doesn't always happen like that. So, you know, I think we sometimes do ourselves a disservice by pushing some of these narratives. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. I've heard it a few times from a few different people about uh, that are more established entrepreneurs now that there's a, there's a point in everyone's journey, like a point of no return, almost like you push to the edge, um, like, you know, the whole journey pushes you to the edge and it's up to you to either back you get you either back down or if you keep going you break through you know it's almost like it's a rite of passage on this entrepreneur's journey where you're kind of looking over the edge at one point and it's like you know i've heard of people down to the last last hundred hundred dollars or whatever it is and they keep going and it seems to be a consistent theme it's certainly in the community we're part of where they where people have got to the point where they're about to give up and they just keep going that little bit further i've never seen that um that drawing with the guys kind of mining underground, yeah. Yeah. And one guy yeah. gives up, and he's like, "Oh, he's about, he's a few centimeters away from breaking through." You know, I think there's almost like a tipping point in the. It seems to me in in the journey where, if you just if you can be so close to success, but it just happens to be that you know that darkest point is just at the moment when you're just about to break through. Yeah, love that. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. Um, I always refer to that picture when. I'm you know, having a moment of struggle, um, you know, because, yeah, I think, you know, even as you're working and you're doing things, you know, there's there, there are moments where um, people are not getting back to you, you know, by email, mm. you know, ghosting you, mm. actually. Um, mm. You know, things are just like, you're trying to make things work, but it, it's just like, it's, you know, it's, it feels like you're trying to pull jam out of a stone, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> This, this is the best analogy I could come up with. Um, <laughs> like, water, what we it. say. <laughs> I like jam. I like jam. Yeah, it's very like better. <laughs> I, I, yeah. What I liked about, you know, when I was kind of reading up on your story, I think it was, I listened to another one of your pods, you got rejected something like 40 times on your on your first um, book that you wrote. And now you've got 11 books. Yes, I did. It just reminded me of that. You know, 40 times, how many people would, would keep going? Well, I, you know, I think it's quite, it's quite common. It's, it's quite a mm. common thing. It's, this is that I think it's one of the things that well, I had with when I wrote my book and I was like reading up on like how to get a publisher and then it was just, everyone was just saying like oh get ready to get rejected it's and that's why, it, 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 that's why I just said I'm going to do it like print on demand kind of thing uh, because I, did, I wasn't ready to get rejected but yeah so yeah absolutely and it's actually 
I agree on on, on, on that there, Mark, but uh, that was my question here as well. So you've written 11 books. How many more are there uh, in your pencil? I, I don't think I'm going to release anything for a while, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Uh, I Why think is that? I'm, I'm happy with my catalog um, as of now. And right now I'm, you know, putting my focus into the creativity school and trying to get that app launched and you know, mm. figuring out how that's going to come about. So yeah, that, no, I don't think you'll see any new books from me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that leads me on to say um, to talk about your creativity school and I see you've, you've done an audio series with that is it just purely an, like a, a, an audio series um, I've seen one of them learned on, on being an introvert is that like a series of modules and courses you do that or is it just how, how have you actually sort of developed and um, brought that to uh, to the market the creativity school we take more of an exploratory approach um, to learning. So all of these audio series are really just an exploration of that specific topic. So like the audio series on mastering yourself is an exploration on you know what it means to master yourself, and it's not like a like it was not like um, me giving instruction. It's it's really more of an exploration of this topic and what does it mean, you know, from, you know, multiple perspectives. And for, um, on being an introvert, that actually will premiere when the app is launched. And that was just me exploring what it meant from, you know, for me being an introvert and what, ha you know, how does that help me? How's that, um, what are the things that I've had to work through um, you know, with my natural introvert, introverted tendencies. Um, I can relate. So yeah, that's 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 it's in a, that's it. Yeah. So is this is this a linear course of um, an audio series, or is it, can people sort of cherry pick what they want from the creativity school? And how's how's it how's it going to work? Well, the audio channels, the creativity audio would be free but the audio plus channel um, would be available to paying subscribers. Um, so we have both um, free content and paying content. And then we also have the tidbit of the day, which is, will be coming through in the form of push notifications. So every day you get like a tidbit on creativity or productivity or planning or just like some encouragement um, that will be free. And then we have this thing called the idea box. So it's like um, a virtual box where like every week you get like a different game or a different activity. And that will also be available for our paying subscribers as well. And this is all served up by uh, a mobile app then? Yes, it's all in, in that one app. Fantastic. That's really clever. Thank you. <laughs> well, so that's where you're focused. Yeah, that's, that's taking all your energy and focus at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm coming up with content and designing what the boxes will look like and, you know, so that's that's what has been keeping me a bit busy. Mm. I can imagine. That's a lot of this, work. <laughs> this past month and for the next few months. <laughs> yeah. So that's the immediate future. Have you got have you got thoughts about where you'd want to go long term, like in the next sort of five years or are you, do you not you not think ahead like that? You know, I am... Yeah. Um, I haven't really thought, you know, five years ahead. Um, I am, you know, kind of just kind of focused on the, you know, my immediate um, projects and concerns. Um, but, you know, five years, you know, I might get into speaking, so public speaking. Um, I do see myself going on like a speaking tour. Um, you know, I mean, talking about the introvert thing, I can relate to that. And um, it's, it's interesting how we kind of class ourselves as introvert or extrovert. And I think we're both, we're all both really, aren't we? Depending on what, what day of the week I think it is really. But um, you can you can train yourself with, it, with enough practice to to achieve anything, I think. Like you might, we might class ourselves as introvert. I, I know I certainly did. And now, you know, here we are recording ourselves on video, doing podcasts and, um, you know, speaking in front of a group of people was always like, like my number one fear. But um, it's just about practice and repetition, I think. I think you can you can learn to you shape yourself in any way you want. I don't think we're kind of stuck 
you know, you, in, in any particular box, you know. So, and I think one thing I've learned is if you if you are nervous or scared of something, then that's almost like the direction you need to go in. It's almost like that's yeah, that's where the growth is. If you're scared of public speaking, that's like that's what you need to do if you want to grow. So, I think you've got the right idea there. If you consider yourself an introvert, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I agree with that. I I really had to train myself, um, especially when it comes to like public speaking and um, in being more interactive. I really had to um, come out of my shell. Mm. And public speaking is, I think, I wouldn't say the last frontier, but it's the it's I guess one of the big things that I have next on my list. Like, you know, I really, like in my mind, you know, I've, I've really been picturing like what speaking tour would look like and um, the, all the different cities I would go to. So it's all coming together well, in my guess head. guess what, you're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing it now at the moment with public speaking here. But I love yeah, that, definitely. Just the, the thing that, that you just said there, Mark. It's, it's, I think that's again a circle coming around is where you, the thing that you are afraid of or, or uh, the struggle you have, that's the, 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 the direction you need to go into. It's, 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 it's counterintuitive, but I, I love it because that means that that's where your journey is going. Otherwise, be, again, you just go to the majority and what we talked about in the beginning is like you're being cool, or being part of the masses, but being different is, I think being different is the new cool, actually, um, because otherwise you just, the same as everyone else and to the only way you can be different is by challenging those challenges that you get on your path and i think that if you are really afraid of public speaking that's what you need to do yes. i mean all, all those kind of things so whatever it is that you're really afraid of that's what you need to do yeah i yeah. love that that's where growth lies as well but then you're afraid of it so you need to come up with creative ways to get yourself over that hurdle yeah and I think that that's where creativity comes in again. Like, how can I, and, and that's the weirdest creativity of all, of course. Like, how can I get myself over the hurdle that I create for myself? <laughs> is it <laughs> mind, mean, mind made, isn't it? It's all That's fun, mind fucks, yeah. That's, yeah. None of it's yeah. real, is it? You know, all these fears that we have, our mind just kind of keep us safe, trying to hold us back. Um, yeah. But when you face them, that's when you realize, uh, you know, they're, they're just, there's nothing there, you know, but it's, it's strange how these things can keep us stuck. You know, one of, one of the ones coming up for me at the moment is that is around the financial side, you know, investing in myself, spending money on um, educating in myself and furthering my my own knowledge. And But the fear that comes up around around money in particular is something that I'm having to, to deal with now, you know, and um, I, I'm a big believer in trust, I think. I've seen it enough times where, where if you face a fear, um, is somehow you get rewarded on the other side. You know, that's clearly what I've noticed. It's got you back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you have to cross that boundary yourself. You have to be prepared to face that fear to get the reward on the other side. You know, it's almost like um, I saw someone in the community and she had lost her job and decided to invest all, you know, a lot of the money that she received uh, in her own education, which is a bit of a risk. But then on the other side, she suddenly came on into all this money. It was it was bizarre how it all it all worked, you know, just because she'd faced that fear. It was almost like the universe going, there you go, there's your reward. <laughs> and I do I do think that's um that's common a lot of a lot of things. You know, just gotta if you can yeah. cross that boundary, you are you are supported somehow by the universe. But um But you got to make the decision. You've got to make that step. Yeah. You've got to step. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. want to get supported to do it. <laughs> I love that, yeah. I agree with that as well. Um, you know, I think fears just look a lot bigger in our heads. Um, I often find that when I'm, you know, a bit hesitant to do something, and I just go ahead and do it. You know, you, in, you once you're in it, you're just like, oh, this actually isn't so bad, or this isn't as well, scary. Well, most as of the time, it's, it's, it's even fun. Most of the time, just the thoughts always worse than the actual doing. A lot of the time, isn't it? Just breaking uh, that inertia, and that fear. Yeah, yeah. I always use this, uh, this this metaphor of bungee jumping. 
is that when you are on the edge of that bridge or wherever it is, your fears will go, no, no fucking way I'm going to jump off. No way I'm going to do this. I'm not insane. I'm not crazy. I can sit on the couch and watch telly. And then something in you go like, go, go, go. And then the moment when you do it, you get so much adrenaline that that same fear that you just battles with will go, ooh, that was awesome. Let's do it again. <laughs> It's like the opposite of what it said at the beginning. And that's so beautiful. It says, oh, again, again, again. Yeah, that's it. The reward on the other side. Yeah, Yeah. the reward is... it, And the the reward is so much greater than... um, Yes, the plus is so much greater than the minus that you have. But you have to jump there in this case. Yeah. Actually, I have to go bungee jumping at some point. <laughs> I've been that's what I've know, never going on never and on about. Like I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny that you say that because I'm the one that says I'm never ever gonna do that in my life. I've done I've skydived once, but and because I have a massive fear of heights, uh, and that was something I've you always do. wanted to do, and I forced myself to do it, and. Well, I think we've what got an action say? point here, all of us. We've got an action point. Uh, but, you know what? It was probably the, the most ex- exhilarating thing I've ever done in my life. And I'd, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I'd still be fearful going up in the plane, but I'm so grateful that I pushed myself through that fear mm. and did it. That's and like you said, it, 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 it's the reward's always there for you if you're just willing to push through that fear. Yeah. The beautiful sentence you said there. I'm grateful that I pushed myself through that fear. Mm. That's a really, really powerful mm. sentence. Yes. That can be anything. It means different things for yeah. different people. Like me going to the, we talked about it right here before, going to the Amazon and doing plant medicine retreat. I was terrified throughout the whole thing. <laughs> but 10 days of that. But I, I look back now and I'm um, very proud of myself for, for doing it, getting through it, you know, and um, you, you grow so much for those things when they really, really, like peak your fear and yet you still move forward and do them that's that's where the most growth is the most potential the thing is that a lot of the time the fear is kind of like your mind thinking that is impossible Mm. or the fear of failure it'll give you it'll give you the worst case scenario yeah your 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 your, your, yeah fear of failure is kind of like thinking from that negative thing like it's impossible I, i can never get through there or like i can never climb that mountain but making the impossible possible, that's, that's, that's why you got that reward. You made the impossible possible. Yeah, that's something I started doing was your mind will inst- will, will start playing the worst case scenario. Like, yeah. oh, what if I get on stage in front of all those people where I can't find my words and I shake and, you know, I can't... Most probably my pants will I fall crumble. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the stuff you think, right? It's like, it is. Ah. It repairs yeah. you for the worst. But you can actually visualise, okay... Let me visualize the wor- the best case scenario. I go onto that stage. I'm confident. You know, everybody loves me. They cheer at the end. You know, it's just kind of like just reprogramming your mind almost. You know, instead of like looking for the negative, what about what? Why not? I just play the the positive out. And if you yeah. do that enough times, you can always reprogram your mind. You know, to um, to to not be. I'll go into these situations. Well, and, and this, this is also the thing what we talked about earlier is like just doing it is that like, like what I you guys know that if every time when I go on a stage uh, and, I, and for Frederick, I used to be a musician as well and I used to play for quite like large crowds and and now I do a lot of uh, seminars, web, web, webinars and at the hour before I go live I, I literally just sit on the toilet. I'm <laughs> shitting myself and I, just, I have to puke and I, I just feel awful. But the good thing is, I know yeah. that the moment we go live, I Afterwards. will nail it. I will nail it when we go live. And afterwards, there will be a reward and people will like it. People say, thank you for your information, blah, blah, blah. And so just, so my internal child and everything just goes, ah, no, 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 run away. But I know that it's gonna be okay. And the reason why I know it's gonna be okay is because I did it before. I did it before, so I know it's gonna be okay. Mm. It's stage fright, isn't it? It's stage fright, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 on the other side of fear is something beautiful. Yeah, 100%. Well, that feels like a nice place to uh, to end things on, you know? I love that. 
the message is such an important message that the facing fear i think if we're going to really make the most of this life and this this amazing opportunity you've got i say it all the time in my posts you've got to you've got to embrace that fear you know as an entrepreneur or whatever you're doing in life it's like just just face it and move forward and trust and, and that's the whole mm. thing here trust your creativity right that's trust that you'll figure a way yeah. doesn't really matter what will get on my path this is my idea and i love that what we started off with like the two ways of creativity one is like an, a thing that you put on the horizon let's go there yeah but there might be tigers there might be this there might be that there might be that no, no i know i'm creative enough to find a solution for that thing that i will encounter or maybe not even encounter let's see what happens i definitely Definitely, I think goes the best way to get through life. Brilliant. Thank you, Frederick. This has been a brilliant pod. Thanks for thanks for, for joining us. And um, yeah, it's amazing all, the, all the things you. you've produced. The, the amount of stuff you put out there is, is incredible. Especially like as you say, twenty five years old. It's just like no stopping well, you. That's a body of work books? already. Yeah. Uh, How many books did you write, Mark? Uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> I've got a few blogs. <laughs> I wrote a shopping list. Yeah. i got a to-do list. But, uh, yeah. We've got some catching up to do, should we say. But um, yeah, great inspiration. Thank you, Frederick. We look forward to seeing what, you know, what comes next. I know you've got your app coming out. And uh, we'll put some details here um, with the pod as well that people can check out. I know you're on Instagram. Uh, but yes, thanks so much, Frederick. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. Amazing. It's been a call. pleasure. Love it. Oh, great for calling. Thank you. And we'll be back next week, guys. Another pod, another amazing guest coming up. So bye for now. Cheers, guys. Adios. Adios, Adios amigos. Adios. You have been listening to the Free Amigos. amigos. Hey there, hope you've really enjoyed listening or watching to the conversation today. And as promised, we have all the links to the topics discussed in the description below and also on our website. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to hit that subscribe button or follow the link to our brand new website where you can sign up to our weekly newsletter. Thank you for watching or listening. We hope you got something good out of it. If you've got any interesting topics you'd like us to discuss or any questions please don't hesitate to get in touch and that's it see you in the next pod adios Cheers.